Good afternoon. My name is Genoa Blinkenship. We're very glad to have you here today for our EMSL Learn webinar. Today we're going to be discussing characterization and modification of soils, organic, and biological matter. And we're very glad to have researchers from all over the globe here. Uh, so thank you for taking the time to join us. Uh, we wanted to let you know that we will be uh, having an EMSL uh, summer school in July. So there won't be an EMSL Learn webinar, but we hope that you will join us uh, July 18th to the 22nd. There's still time to register. You can register right up until uh, the day of the event starts. Uh, so looking forward to seeing people there. Uh, we will be, uh, our presenters will be teaching folks how to use advanced visualization, analysis, and modeling tools for soil analysis. So the link will be to register will be in the chat. Today, we are very glad to have uh, three presenters and uh, we will be leading uh, with EMSL computational chemist, Amity Anderson. She will be discussing simulating molecular interfaces between soils and living systems. EMSL chemist, Daniel Mejija Rodriguez will provide details on analyzing molecular properties on atom at a time through spectroscopy. And EMSL physicist Margaret Chung will talk through protein chemistry at a quantum mechanical level, including enzymatic and chemical reactions, as well as provide attendees information about EMSL's currently open exploratory call for proposals. Letters of intent for that call are due on July 6. Marat Valiev was scheduled to present the quantum protein chemistry talk during this webinar today, but was unable to attend. So Margaret will be presenting his material in his stead. There will be time at the end of this webinar for questions and answer, uh, our Q and A period. So we encourage you to post your questions in the Zoom chat and our presenters can answer them during the Q and A. With that, we will begin with Amity. Hey, thank you. Um, I will be uh, discussing molecular dynamics um, simulations um, applied to uh, soil organic matter uh, interactions with uh, molecular uh, systems like uh, 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 other organic matter and uh, uh, mineral systems and uh, and um, cationic uh, metals that are uh, in solution in uh, in organic matter. Um, so, uh, so I just wanted to start with uh, just some ideas about, um, uh, or some some uh, ideas about how. Uh, um, uh, what kinds of composition you have for uh, um, uh, of organics and, and bio uh, organics in, in soil systems, which uh, um, uh, would include carbohydrates, lignans, proteins, and lipids. Um, this is not uh, at all a complete list of what could be possible in soil organic systems. Uh, there, there are possibilities for uh, having tannins and uh, and uh, um, and uh, amino sugars and and other uh, organic acids inside soil. Um, so this is not at all a complete list, but uh, but it it gives you an overview of of the most um, uh, abundant uh, or organics inside of soil systems. So I just wanted to go over also. Um, uh, possible um, mineral systems that are in in uh, soils. Um, this is not, of course, a complete list, but this is just an idea to show you um, uh, the atomistic um, models that are possible for uh, uh, modeling uh, mineral surfaces inside soil uh, systems and. Um, 
um, and putting that together with the organics, I'd like to show um, some dynamics of these uh, possible uh, uh, systems. Um, in this system, uh, the red, the yellow, the green, and the blue are organics or, or bioorganics that uh, represent lignin, uh, lipids, like, uh, um, like, uh, um, uh, palmitate and uh, and pentaglycine uh, for a peptide and a sugar trehalose. And uh, then the orange is a uh, montmorillonite uh, 001 surface. And, um, and the background is in water and, and there are cations of either sodium or, or um, calcium. So we can look at how these uh, interact with each other. And I note that uh, the organic uh, material has aggregated on top of the, uh, of the mineral surface in this particular model uh, simulation. And uh, you can do comparisons between uh, if you have sodium in the system and how it aggregates and and if you have calcium in the system um, and how it aggregates. So this is just a dynamical picture of what's going on with uh, these two systems. And so um, <clears throat> so uh, there are a number of analyses that you can do with these uh, molecular dynamic simulations. I'm uh, showing uh, here uh, uh, some work that we have done recently with calcite as a mineral surface, uh, which is in gray, and um, looking at uh, um, pentaglycine, um, laurate, and uh, <clears throat> trehalose and, and lignin um, interacting with the calcite surface. And you note that uh, the pentaglycine and the laurate interact strongly with the uh, calcite surface, but the trehalose and, the, uh, and especially the lignin does not. But as a mixture, you can see that there is some interesting morphology that takes place with uh, with uh, looking at the calcite with the aggregate of every uh, um, uh, uh, every organic uh, system in that uh, system, and you can do a number of analyses. Uh, I'm showing uh, the the density of uh, each one of the organics as a function of um, the distance from the uh, calcite surface to see which one is the majority interactor uh, versus uh, uh, one is that that is not interacting as much. And this is just uh, some more, uh, um, uh, another look at some more uh, systems that we can uh, look at uh, this particular case shows cellulose um, interacting with the uh, soil organic matter. And, uh, and I've already gone over the Montmorillonite uh, systems. And uh, I'd like to also uh, emphasize uh, that we could look at um, the cation systems in, in these systems like uh, sodium and uh, calcium. And uh, in, in gray, uh, you see that the organic matter uh, is, 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 is now a shadow and uh, that you see that the, uh, the cations in the system are um, all entrained by the organic matter. And uh, we can further go on and look at um, the environment around um, these uh, uh, um, metal ions in the system. And uh, we can take uh, the environment of that 
cation and, and dressed with the organic system and um, and and further simulate uh, spectroscopies, which uh, Daniel will be talking about further uh, in his uh, section of the uh, uh, seminar. And uh, we can look at uh, uh, the Zane spectroscopy or the, or the X-ray uh, absorption spectroscopy of these uh, systems to get an idea of, of uh, what kind of environment you have uh, to characterize um, the organic uh, compound uh, uh, metal ion interaction. And uh, that um, we can do with NWChem, uh, and the TDDFT module of NWChem. So um, we also can do larger biopolymers uh, like uh, proteins. And this is uh, just showing the GB1 uh, protein interacting with uh, five different uh, types of mineral surfaces and looking at the dipole moment orientation and, and the moment as a function of time. And uh, that's um, also possible. Um, so uh, on the uh, Tahoma system, we have a, a number of uh, uh, classical molecular dynamics codes that are available. Including lamps and and uh, Gromex and NAMD and and uh, uh, amber um, and uh, I at this point like to just acknowledge my uh, my collaborators for this work that I have presented and uh, and I um, I thank you for your uh, for your um, attendance. Hi, everyone. Um, I will talk in a little bit more about uh, NWCAM and the capabilities uh, that NWCAM has to provide to the users. And um, before touching base with uh, the uh, spectroscopy, spectroscopy that Amity was talking about, I just want to show you a big picture of what has been done with NWCAM in the literature. So this is, was a search uh, about all 4,000 abstracts I could find in um, web of knowledge. And the big words that come in here are properties. So I'm going to talk about a little bit more about properties, what can NWCAM calculate about properties. But I also want also to point that uh, protein appears there just below properties and in between density functional theory. And uh, it's a really important uh, aspect that we need to develop a, a little bit more or advertise a little bit more, because we can do some uh, protein chemistry, some processes, some pro properties also with proteins with NWCAM. More information will be in the web page that should be listed uh, here in the slide and also in the, uh, in the chat. Um, and well, coming back to uh, Amity's presentation, one of the main aspects of uh, capabilities with NWCAM about properties is that we can Compute spectroscopies and relate directly to experiment, right? And uh, just to start, give you an example: we can do UVB spectroscopy or X-ray spectroscopy, and with X-ray we can do also photo emission or absorption spectroscopy. And it will depend on the energy window. We can do this uh, with different methodologies. The most used one is based on density density functional theory, and it provides us uh, with all these three uh, spectroscopy: UVBs, X-ray photo emission and X-ray absorption. The great thing about this is that uh, we can relate very precise structural properties of these uh, spectroscopies uh, uh, to a specific molecule or, or even a, a specific atom. For example, in, in, in the middle panel, I show you X-ray photo emission of the uh, water cluster. And we classified uh, the interactions of these uh, water molecules depending on how many hydrogen, hydrogen bonds they have and the type. Uh, and we show that it's a little nice spread between donors and acceptors of hydrogen bonds uh, with a core level X-ray for emission spectra. Um, you can do this also uh, with uh, uh, X-ray absorption spectra of, of the core level. And you can also uh, have assignments uh, at, at the valence uh, level X-ray absorption and UVVs. 
for example, with the UVVs, we can study uh, secondary organic aerosols. And um, this was a work that uh, the experimentalists knew that there was a strong signal in the visible region uh, that, but they didn't know what molecule was uh, causing that signal. So the, the computational work was to find many different isomers that could be in principle in that uh, sample. Uh, for each isomers, do an extensive conformer search and do a molecular dynamic simulation in order to have this dynamical information and temperature information as well. Um, with this setup, we couldn't find anything really popping up in the right region uh, that the experimentalists were seeing, but uh, adding uh, solvation effects with implicit solvation models, we started to see that some peaks started to show in the right region. So uh, we narrowed down uh, the number of molecules, the type of molecules that could be present in that sample that uh, produces that signal. There's still more work to be done. This is work in progress, uh, but we can do that, right? We can, from a unknown mixture, try to uh, elucidate which compounds are responsible for some signals that, that are being seen. Other properties that can be computed with uh, NWKM include uh, other optical properties like infrared and Raman vibrational spectra, also circular dichroism and optical rotation spectra. We can compute nuclear magnetic resonance shieldings and also coupling constants. Um, the most simple ones also are thermodynamic properties like uh, reaction energies, free energies and other electronic properties that could also in principle tells us more about the reactivity of the system like chemical hardness and study electron transfer reactions using Marcus theory. To give you some examples of these uh, other types of properties, let me start with what has been published in the literature with the help of NWCAM and sometimes uh, as uh, part of a user project uh, uh, in, in MCEL. So the top um, study was uh, the research about um, ethylene production in some uh, bacteria in anaerobic conditions and also low sulfate concentration. Uh, the researchers uh, traced back this production to several uh, sulfur containing molecules. And uh, in the right panel in F, uh, they showed three possible um, precursors. They studied the free energies of reaction insulvation of all these uh, redox reactions. And they show that all of these are thermodynamic favorable and they correlate very well uh, with the amount of gas being uh, liberated in the sample. And the Blochem here was used to compute these uh, changes of and Gibbs free energies. It was a rather simple calculation using density functional theory and implicit solvation model to, to get uh, the solvation effects into account. No dynamical information is here. It was just uh, to see if these reactions are or not thermodynamic favorable. In the bottom panel, uh, this was more like a metabolomics uh, work. And um, the point is that uh, with many biochemical databases, uh, based on experimental data are very incomplete uh, because we know that there should be a lot more, more metabolites that can be analyzed in, in, the, in the lab. So they try to complement uh, these databases with in silico predictions using NWCAM. And um, first they validated their approach, uh, trying to get uh, reactions free energies uh, for some known experimental uh, uh, cases. And they pinpointed a density functional that was uh, really good at, at predicting those reactions free energies that was a scan and did a, a whole bunch set up uh, defining all the computational parameters, their base sets and, and everything. And then they tried to predict um, major metabolic pathways uh, the, the reaction energies of major metabolic pathways, including glycolysis and the tricarboxylic acid cycle. Uh, what they found is that they can predict up to 1.5 kcal per mole accuracy, all these free energies of reactions using this, this, this functional. Another way we can use NWCAM uh, for biology 
biological research is to study the speciation of uh, transition metals in, in the environment, right? Um, in this case, there was a study of uh, how methyl mercury uh, was uh, changed in the environment. And there was some already some kinetic model there that uh, took into account some species, but uh, there was another proposal that uh, uh, there should be other species involved also in this kinetic model. Here they study all their uh, reaction pathways for this uh, uh, different uh, dimethylmercury uh, production pathway. And they found that uh, this, even though contributes somewhat a little bit, should not be the, the, the major uh, pathway to produce uh, for the speciation of, of, of mercury in the environment. Uh, the study included relativistic effects because mercury is a, a heavy metal that we should uh, include that in order to be really precise. It used density functional theory and it used implicit salvation models. It was also a static uh, study, no dynamical information is here, but we can in principle include uh, dynamical effects and temperature effects in, uh, as well uh, to get free energies. With nuclear magnetic resonance, uh, there's a nice uh, package also from PNNL called ICICLE to predict NMR chemical shifts. This ICICLE package uh, uses as one of its backends uh, NWCAM. And NWCAM is used to produce a dynamics, molecular dynamic simulation to get a lot of conformers at a given temperature and then uh, optimize those structures and predict the uh, chemical shieldings, right, the, uh, for NMR and compare it to the literature and also add it to uh, biochemical databases and be able to uh, identify unknown uh, metabolites in samples. Um, as I told you, this is NWCAM's backend with density functional theory. It includes temperature effects and uh, ensemble averaging through molecular dynamic simulations. You can also include um, solvation effects in, in, in this case. And uh, of course, the accuracy of the method will depend because it's based in density functional theory on what density functional you're using in that case, what approximation. Uh, but we can, uh, with the exper expertise we have, select the right and the appropriate functional for you and be able to uh, get really good results with this. We can also predict uh, vibrational spectra, Raman spectra. And here I show you a um, case where Raman spectra was uh, computed using the autocorrelation function, the polarizability autocorrelation function. And uh, the advantage of this approach instead of the traditional um, harmonic approximation is that uh, we can get harmonic effects and we can also sample uh, uh, this fingerprint region that could in principle help us to identify an unknown metabolite um, in a sample. The approach here, because computing this way Raman spectra is very expensive, was to use an approximation uh, for the polarizability uh, that is really, really fast. It's almost for free after a ground state calculation. So uh, you can, in principle, do a rather lengthy molecular dynamics trajectory to compute the autocorrelation function and converge the result. So this is also a very recent uh, example. And we are also working on trying to speed up a little bit more the sampling of the trajectory to get um, better statistics and also trying to uh, improve this approximate polarizability calculation. But uh, we show here that in principle, uh, we can get the main peaks uh, in the right regions. Uh, what we know is that we need longer trajectories uh, to get really the harmonic uh, effects uh, into account. And NWCAM is a really uh, a code with a long history right now, but it's still being developed. And recent enhancements, and this is uh, affects everything I told you before, is uh, I had show you a list, just a, a list here is not complete, but I think it's the most important ones is that we have interface NWCAM to existing uh, libraries in the literature uh, 
to really expand the capabilities of NWCAM. Since the density functional theory is the uh, most used in, in NWCAM, we interface it with LibXC, and now we have approximately 600 functionals at our hand. And uh, many of these functionals with LibXC, you can access uh, higher order uh, response properties uh, because we have now the derivatives uh, that we need. We also interface NWCAM with the plant library for uh, metadynamics and hyperdynamics analysis of uh, molecular dynamic simulations. Uh, we can do that with quantum mechanical uh, molecular dynamics, but also with uh, hybrid QM MM approaches that Margaret is going to talk about uh, in, in a few minutes, or pure MM approaches as well. We have uh, now GW approximation for quasi-particle energies and charge excitations. So the first uh, photo emission spectra, X-ray photo emission spectra I showed you was using GW approximation. This is a scalable approach. So we have computed uh, systems with more than a thousand atoms, uh, the core level spectroscopy for this. Uh, and well, the valence, it's, it's a little bit cheaper. So I think we could do it to even larger uh, system sizes. Uh, we have introduced a uh, resolution of the identity in TDDFT. So this will speed up TDDFT calculations. If you have used NWCAM before with TDDFT, uh, there was no uh, resolution of identity in TDDFT. So it was uh, a little bit more expensive. I think an order of magnitude more expensive. So now we have faster calculations with smaller memory footprint. And um, another very important point is that we have now included the extended tight binding approaches, uh, very popular right now with uh, XTB uh, inside NWCAM. So we can do semi empirical calculations in WCAM, for example, to generate a very long MD trajectory, uh, have very good statistics along that trajectory, and then calculate properties uh, in some snapshots. Uh, so we, th we think this can improve a little bit more uh, what can be done with NWCAM. And finally, uh, we have now intrinsic bond orbitals analysis, and these orbitals are really good at um, to get L Lewis structures or even um, electron fall flows around reaction paths. So mechanism of reactions in organic chemistry, you can follow really and, 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 and draw your arrows using these intrinsic bond orbitals. We can do that also uh, for um, reaction catalyzed by an enzyme and uh, defining, as Margaret told you about, a QM region and looking at these orbitals along this reaction and get really the reaction mechanisms for this. So that's all about for me and I will handle uh, to Margaret. Hi. Hi all, I am Margaret Chung. I thank Amity and Daniel who presented the computational resources from AMSL Advance, the science of users by providing structural models to aid the interpretation of experimental observations. These computational models further enable the research design and the validation of hypotheses. The core software of today's computational resource is NWCAM, that's Northwest CAM. I stand in for Dr. Marat Mila to first talk about the history and develop of NWCAM, I will then end this presentation about the current MZOL proposal call for exploratory research for users program. How you can submit a letter of intent and proposal to use MZOL's computational facilities such as NWCAM and staff's time to enhance your research. So NWCAM is an open source computation package developed by the Department of Energy, DOE, to model biological and chemical systems at molecular level. So the operation of NWCAM is supported by a wide range of computational platforms from your personal laptops to the leadership class for exascale computings at the DOE National Laboratories. So NWCAM is particularly useful to categorize the chemical properties of molecularly complex compounds, as you can see from Amity's Daniels presentation, by revealing the electronic structures at the interface in organic or in organic and living matters such as proteins. 
As a result, scientists are able to discover the crucial chemical processes or reactions in a solution or at disparate heart interfaces through the lens of quantum mechanics in bond breaking and bond forming, charge transfer, etc. However, with such a high resolution chemical detail, there comes at a high price of computation, as if we are downloading gigabytes of photo images. Speed has become an issue. So instead of downloading every single pixels from an image in high resolution on, my, on your phone, here we have the experience of downloading uh, low resolution ones, so such that drastically reduce the need for data space and computation. So this is the same idea for the development of NWCAM, is that the strategy is developed by scientists a couple decades ago, and also by the development teams by combining a hybrid model. The idea is we divide the molecular complex into two parts. The core parts of the electronic structure will be computed in high resolution, we call it quantum mechanics, by solving the wave function in the Schrodinger's equations, as you heard about the Schrodinger's cat. Whereas the outside of the chemistry that will be computed by classical mechanics using Newtonian's equation of motions as to your right, we call it molecular mechanics. And this is basically thinking about this is the Newton's apples. So the hybrid of QM quantum mechanics and MM molecular mechanics approach were first developed by Dr. Ariel Walshaw and Martin Kerplus. The two scientists and Michael Levitt received, received the 2013 Nobel Prize in Chemistry for development of the multi-scale models for complex uh, com chemical systems. So these are very high level of calculations and is at your surface. We are implemented in the user program to advance your research. So instead of describing the entire complex system in detailed electronic structures, we now use a hybrid QMMM in NWCAM. The total energy of system includes the quantum mechanical part as described by E, as energy, QM as quantum mechanics, and molecular mechanics. And also there are several clever tricks to compute the correlation between the quantum part and the mechanical part. So the choice of QMMM tricks as what Daniel mentioned, or were mentioned that uh, to compute the spectroscopy or the level the tricks computed in Amity's simulation for dynamics really requires on the type of calculation outputs. Are you looking at these, uh, the, the spectroscopy or are you looking at the dynamics or are you looking at the reactions or are you looking at the free energy stability? So if you wanted to uh, uh, aim at different um, outcomes, then we will want to use different type of tricks or electronic structures that carefully uh, uh, fit your purpose. So I will end my presentation about how to use MZOL computing resources so users like you can advance your science relative to the objective of the Department of Energy Basic Science Research Program. And also that you can see it ranges from uh, micro molecular to soil from MZO through the integrated research areas and platforms. Here in the middle, we are the cohort for systems modeling and data sciences that include Daniel and Amity. And we have other cohort of scientists who will work on integrated uh, uh, approaches that connect structures and systems level. And the uh, webinars to talk about these level, levels that uh, Linda will uh, offer a link to the chat. You can look at the past MZOL Learn uh, webinars. So now you can start by submitting a user proposal. Okay, sorry. Let me... You can engage, involve by starting uh, submitting a proposal or letter intent to our user program. The user pro like you would request NWCAM and computing time on our supercomputers. Our name is Tahoma. 
as a computational resource on your proposal. And MZO computational staff team like myself, Daniel and Emily and others will help you to advance your research. And we will work with you depending on the output that you wanted to do in, and in, in order to um, in order to decide the level of calculations in your proposal. So please reach out to us at any time. The immediate um, proposal deadline letter of intent is on July 6. And here is the website that you can email us, reach out to us and, help, and ask us to develop a proposal with you. So here is basically you can follow through. You will first uh, create a uh, user uh, account through, uh, through, the pro through the portal and submit the proposal by clicking through several, um, several options. If you have any questions, please reach out to us. As you can see, these calculations will involve uh, engagement or uh, experts expertise from MZL computational staff. And these are the processes. First, we have an open call, submit of letter intent. Through these processes, you will interact with us. And if selected, your proposal will be encouraged and then resources will be allocated. We specifically encourage experimentalists to, to also enhance your research by submitting a, a request for your computation. And you can consult with us and all kinds of calculations will advance your uh, research outcome. And then it will be awarded, then you will have access to the resources and uh, collaborate with us. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to us and um, we will follow up our um, the rest of the time with Q&A. Okay, thank you, Margaret, Daniel and Amity. We're gonna pull up our questions here and see what people have asked. All right. Okay. Um, the first question is for Amity. What does TDDS module mean? Uh, that is a time density density functional, I mean, time dependent density functional theory. Um, that's a, a quantum chemistry method that involves excited states, which you need to uh, to do the uh, the uh, X-ray uh, absorption spectroscopy. Okay, cool. All right. The next question is for Daniel from um, Michael Green. Uh, question is: As intermolecular distances change, charge transfer can occur. Is it possible to include this in the simulations? Also, I don't know how long the trajectories are, but are they sensitive to initial conditions so that multiple diverging results could emerge, making the results difficult to interpret? Uh, well, to answer the, the first question is that um, we know that density functional theory, in this case, struggles describing charge transfer states. Uh, so it will be hard uh, for density functional theory to do that. But NWKM has other quantum mechanical uh, methods implemented as well. Uh, for example, couple clusters or configuration interaction that could in principle handle that really well. Those are more expensive. <clears throat> so we have to take care about the system size that we really need uh, to compute. But we have also some new advances in GPU implementations for those uh, cases. Now, with respect to the molecular dynamics, uh, yeah, I think the length of the trajectory is very important. It will depend on what process you are looking, really looking at. Uh, we, are, we are trying to do, uh, myself, <laughs> is to implement low cost methodologies to sample uh, a really long trajectory. So we have no questions about uh, uh, issues with starting points uh, that diverge uh, in this case. So it's something that we are looking actively to, to address. And I think we have now this with extended tight binding uh, methodologies, a really good way to address this and really sample trajectories in the uh, nanosecond scale at semi-empirical methods. Okay, thank you. 
Okay, uh, the next question is, I, I'm going to, I'm hopefully going to say it correctly, uh, Dushant um, Aurora, does the EMSL team have a bioreactor connected to a Raman spectrometer? Anybody um, can answer, I'm not sure who. Okay. I can answer this. You can okay, see great. your computational people. We probably, I, I personally don't have that kind of level of details, but I can refer you to someone who knows. And all of the, EMSO actually is a big uh, uh, experimental laboratory, has the most expensive instrumentations. So I'm not going to say like yes or no. I'm just going to, con if you can leave the information, I'll connect you to, um, to the staff scientists who know about it. Will that be okay? <laughs> Yes, we'll make sure that uh, all three of our speakers' email addresses are included in the chat today for any follow-up questions. Uh, we do actually have a, another question that came in through the Q&A, and I'd encourage all of you, if you have additional questions, just to keep it coming, because we do have some time. But we had an anonymous question come in uh, from the Q&A section, and the question is, how does output of NMR differ from Raman spectroscopy? which is superior in identifying organic molecule, molecules and DOM? Uh, well, the, the output, uh, it's very different depending on how you calculate those. Uh, for example, the NMR output would list uh, the chemical shieldings and uh, you need to compute also uh, a standard for reference to really translate into chemical shift. So you have a list only. With Raman, you can do Raman uh, in the harmonic approximation. You will also get a list uh, from uh, active vibrational frequencies and uh, their intensities. But if you compute Raman spectroscopy through this uh, velocity autocorrelation function, what you would get at the end is really the, the spectral shape. Uh, you don't have really defined peaks. You, you, you just have to find the maximum. As to what, which one is superior, superior I I think I'm not the best one to <laughs> really talk about this. Uh, I think both has some advantages and disadvantages. And uh, it will depend also on um, what do you have access to characterize this experimentally, right? Or what experiment do you have at hand? And we could try to simulate it and try to identify uh, an unknown sample, right? But which one is superior, I, I can tell. Okay. All right. Thank you, Daniel. Uh, next question Is it possible to use the um, NW chem computation for managed soil systems and how much detail on the ecosystems are needed for optimal prediction? I think that's an Amity question, right? Um, so, um, so I have to start with a, a model that is, is, is quite, um, basic um, like four components um, but I am uh, with another collaborator looking at systems that are um, even more complex than that so if you have like a bad Krevlin plot of, of what what um, types of organics you have in the system we can uh, we can uh, look at what um, uh, what composition of organics we can put together and have representative organics from uh, like I, I showed before um, and, and expand it to uh, um, uh, many different types of organic systems um, and, and do an aggregate of those together. Okay. So, um, yeah. Okay. We have another um, NW um, Chem question from um, Benjamin Moskowitz. Can NW Chem be applied for heterogeneous catalysts that are typically evaluated with periodic boundary conditions? Well, NW Chem has a plane wave module with periodic boundary conditions, but not uh, the, the standard Gaussian basis based uh, quantum mechanical calculations. Uh, so in principle, yes, we can do that with NW Chem because we have the plane wave module. We could also approach this uh, trying to compute a large cluster uh, to simulate like an infinite surface, right? It, 
will depend. Yeah, I, I know there are some side effects uh, uh, that will come into play, but we can approach from these two from these two sides. So in principle, yes, we can look at heterogeneous uh, reactions. It's in either approach with endoblocan. Okay. All right. Um, I have a question from Margaret. Margaret, what advantages does a QM or MM model offer compared to computationally cheaper alternatives such as um, atomistic reactive force fields? I think that um, it really depends, is a trade-off between speed and accuracy. I myself don't have the experience, uh, experience in running the active force fields. Um, Daniel, do you have that? Uh, well, um, I know that uh, the reactive force fields are um, very tailored to a specific reaction. So it's not really transferable to one system to another. So that's a disadvantage in, with QMMM uh, because the QMM part, it's uh, completely uh, non-empirical. Uh, you can transfer it to any type of reaction you want. So that for me would be an advantage for, uh, for QMMM against uh, reactive force fields, right? Okay. Um, Amity. I'd like to follow, oh, follow up. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yes. I'd like to follow up is that the capability of NWKM, as uh, you see, is very broad and is uh, able to integrate with very different type of need. So even though if we don't have it now, doesn't mean that we won't have it. If it's something that's really important to users, there, there will be incentive to develop it. Okay, great. Uh, Amity, how difficult is it to set up a soil model? For example, how many layers do you include and what is the separation between layers? Uh, so, uh, so I'm assuming that's uh, between uh, uh, different uh, surfaces. Um, so surface layers, I, um, uh, including uh, for like in the calcite system, I'm including like six, seven, uh, even eight layers sometimes. And um, um, the separation, I, I try to keep it at, uh, at 150 uh, angstroms um, between surfaces. Okay, great. Daniel, only density functional theory results were shown. Are there other quantum mechanical methods that are available in, w in NWCHEM? Yes, there are others. And uh, as I uh, answered previously, we could do um, since simple hard to fog. Uh, couple clusters, configuration interaction. So those are wave function um, based methodologies with uh, more defined maybe accuracy progressions between them. And mm -hmm. we can study different uh, also spectroscopies with them. The computational cost increases a lot. Uh, so we are limited to smaller systems in those cases, but mm -hmm. we could uh, uh, use those as well. Okay. Um, just as a follow-up, are EMSL projects limited to using NWCHEM for a quantum mechanical description? Uh, well, uh, NWCHEM is being developed here, so we have uh, all the capabilities also to tweak a little bit, uh, even the code itself. It's the, if what you want to do is not really implemented in there and it's easy to implement. Um, but I think Amity and, and, and Margaret has also worked with other types of softwares and many people has worked with many types of softwares that we could also in principle use. For example, for QM and calculations, we can use CP2K and uh, there's also capabilities for periodic boundary conditions as well in that. And uh, for classical MD simulations, Romax, LAMS, uh, Amber. So yeah, we can use uh, many, many softwares. Uh, but uh, the advantage of NWCHEM is that uh, it, is, it is from MCEL and uh, we have the developers here, still some of the original developers, and we can tweak it uh, uh, as we want, right? Yeah, so I, I want to follow up. Yes, all of us actually have some experience in other softwares. We, we focus uh, NWCAM for two, two major reasons. One, NWCAM is open source, so it's cheap. There's like zero cost, there's no license fee. 
Secondly, that the EMSL, because EMSL is a big experimental laboratory and is, is really specialized for categorization of molecules. So a lot of the development or force fields uh, that we use for uh, users, that EMSL's uh, uh, capability is really helped to advance the, the research um, that align with BER. And NWCAN has a specialty for doing that. So even though there are pros and cons of many different uh, softwares, but for the uh, purpose of advancing the DOE's research, NWCAN is really one of the best. And if there's some missing capability, we can add it to it because developers are here. Gotcha. Very good. Uh, Amity, is it possible to introduce defects at the, at the mineral surfaces? Uh, yes, it is. Um, uh, you can include like a vacancy uh, um, uh, or, or step surfaces or kinks um, in the surface. So it is possible to do that. It, um, yeah, it just adds, it adds another layer of uh, complexity to the system. Okay. Very good. All right, I am down to my last question. So I would encourage any of our attendees, if you have any lingering questions, to please put them in the Q&A or in the chat. Um, I'll go ahead and ask this last one, and then I'll check, the, check in with um, the other moderators here. Uh, Daniel, how large can a quantum mechanical calculation be? Well, uh, it will depend on really the methodolo methodology you selected. Uh, for standard density functional theory calculations, I think um, two, 300 atoms for the quantum mechanical region, uh, it's, uh, it's okay. It still gives you the possibility to, to simulate, uh, to do molecular dynamic simulations in, in, in I don't know, picoseconds timescales and in, in, um, with moderate resources, right? Computational resources. Um, for the couple clusters calculations, I think I will limit it, it to dense of atoms, uh, um, but uh, somewhere around that region. If you, we want to use now the, the same empirical capability, then I would say we can go yeah, to several hundreds of atoms in, in that case, up to thousand atoms uh, for same empirical quantum mechanical calculations. Gotcha. Oh, I, gee, I saw another question. Great. Uh, Patrick, is uh, this is a question for Amity. How can your model contribute to the conversation on sustainability? Or what picture does the data that you collect paint? Um, so uh, what we've been focusing on is, is, is recalcitrant, uh, excuse me, uh, stability of soil organic matter on, on the, uh, on, on the, uh, on, uh, in soils. Uh, so if, if the, uh, if the organic matter sticks to mineral surfaces, it has less of a chance of being uh, um, uh, released and 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 uh, into the environment where it can be uh, decomposed and and uh, be eventually uh, converted to to uh, carbon that ends up in the atmosphere. So. Uh, uh, what we're trying to look at is just uh, the uh, stability of, of of aggregates on the surface and uh, and and how um, the dynamics work between uh, uh, it going in and out of of uh, solution, um, how it uh, aggregates with uh, the with the uh, ions in the system just. Uh, just looking at those type of dynamics. Great, thank you. Well, that is all of our questions. I just wanted to remind you that we will be sharing uh, the email addresses for each of our speakers in the chat. Um, would encourage you to reach out to them uh, if you think of any additional questions. But we wanted to thank you for attending today and remind you that Emsel Summer School is July 18th to the 22nd. Uh, the focus is on soil analysis. We hope that we will see you there. 
and we thank you and thank you to our uh, speakers for their time today and have a great afternoon. Thanks so much. Thank you.